Well, hello everybody and welcome back to a new coloring adventure or actually this is a continuing coloring adventure uh, with C.L. Aldridge Art and I just flipped on the camera as I was adding some lines to a new drawing that I'm working on. Uh, this is going to be a new mandala, and I am not quite uh, sure where it's going to be headed next, but uh, it's not why I'm here today. <laughs> I am here so that we continue can continue with our color along, but I thought you'd like to see it. It is a start on a new drawing to match, or not maybe match, but... Uh, to go with, of course, the one that I finished uh, earlier uh, this week, and, or on Sunday, I guess, is when I finished that. At any rate, so, there it is, a start on another new drawing, and we will put that aside, and what we are working on is our color along. Um, this page is a, um, is a freebie page for you. So if you are uh, participating, let me adjust my camera here. I flipped it on without uh, without too much ado, starting sort of informally today. Um, my name, uh, for those of you who don't know me, is Christine Aldridge, and I am an artist. I do draw coloring books, and uh, we are uh, currently doing a um, color along with a particular picture. Uh, this picture is available for free in uh, a Facebook album uh, on my Facebook artist page. The uh, I will drop a link in below, but uh, there is also a link uh, in the first video where uh, we went over coloring the particular gemstones. And um, the challenge part of it is that I am using a three color palette uh, even though there are 12 colors here, it is the rose pink, mustard gold, and olive green. And then I've merely selected a light, a medium, and a dark, and a contrast color uh, for each of the color groups uh, that I've picked. So there are really, uh, it's a limited number of pencils. Uh, in this particular case, I am using... Uh, any any pencil set will do. Uh, you can also choose to do it with markers. Uh, you can also choose your own colors if that is what you would like to do. Uh, but I always like to share pretty color palettes when I can. And uh, in, in this particular case, I think that this one is a particularly pretty color palette together. Um, so where we stopped, or, or where the first part of this ended, uh, was uh, with these particular gemstones. And as you can see, I did them all, and they all, I think they just look really pretty. Um, I did them all as translucent, olivine-type gemstones. And then we're going to work on this center uh, portion which is the uh, the flower today, and I wanted to do that. I'm going to do the flowers in pinks since I've used the mustards and the olives out here in the frame. I do hope that you will consider, if you like what you see, liking and subscribing here at CL Aldridge Art, and that way you won't miss any videos that I do put up. Uh, also, upcoming videos are a picture, I'm going to do a pre-record on this. This beautiful picture is from, um, sorry, let me get rid of that, Tatiana Bogima Stelova's book, Vintage Classics 2. And um, I was going to color it on Sunday, but I wasn't able to start a stream on Sunday. And I found out what the culprit was. Um, and it was my fault. It was entirely my fault. It wasn't YouTube's fault. Um, it was entirely my fault. 
The problem was I had a, a, a symbol that is not allowed in a description in the description. Um, I did not find that out until I tried to put those same links into the pre-record. And when I did that, in the pre-record, an error message popped up saying exactly what the problem was. Uh, such an error message does not pop up when you are trying to get on live. And um, so I do apologize to everybody that uh, I did miss a Sunday live show. Uh, and hopefully I'll make it up to you by coloring this on a pre-record this week and popping it up. Okay, um, grabbing out my pinks, I have four, which are my original light, dark, and medium. That one there is the contrast color. So I am going to start with this. And I'm going to start with these outer leaves. I don't really know what I want to do with these yet. So I am going to start by putting a layer of my lightest pink down on them. Uh, just to give me a little layer of something so that the other layers can slide around on them. I'm not being fussy just putting a little color down lightly holding the pencil back way back on the pencil so that I am getting light. Now these are the Deli pencils. Uh, these are the ones that I like a lot. They are, I am told that they are similar to polychromos. I don't know that for a fact because I don't have polychromos. But I do have the Delis. Um, I also have Prismacolors, but it is uh, summertime here in Virginia, and my Prismas are very, very soft. These are a soft core oil-based pencil, and they come in a wonderful tin uh, of 72 that looks like this. They are manufactured by Deli Starjoy. Um, they have been... Uh, marketed under many, many names. I believe um, uh, currently they are under Star Joy, um, but there's a link for these below. The price point is wonderful. 72 pencils. Um, they are beautifully weighted, uh, hardwood. They sharpen beautifully, uh, fully coated, um, you know, Brilliant writing. Uh, it just basically says color pencil 116 and then the Deli Starjoy name. Um, but they certainly look a lot like uh, those more expensive brands. Uh, they color beautifully. They blend beautifully. Truly a layering pencil. Uh, they come in two layers. And uh, you can see the ones that are missing are the ones that are out. And they have um, their budget priced at uh, just under $30. So kind of hard to, hard to beat a deal like that. And uh, so far, everybody that I have heard from that uh, bought a set uh, has liked them equally as well. So I guess that that is a testament right there to these pencils. Anyway, how is everybody this week? How are ya? I, I apologize that I haven't been out much in streams. I had uh, a couple of things going on yesterday. I was at, uh, I was at Dee Dee's stream early in the day and um, then I needed to leave and, and uh, just take care of a few things and um, then today I watched uh, uh, you know just a, a couple of uh, quick videos um, kind of unrelated to coloring but uh, that are along the lines of stuff that I need to do computer videos video editing uh, stuff like that and I also watched the uh, 
the studio debut over at uh, The Modernist Colorist. It was nice to hear Deb's voice again. Um, and then I also started to watch uh, some of the uh, HK5 uh, uh, videos. I caught Sammy's uh, video on the jewelry box. Um, I quickly looked at uh, at um, Daydreams. Now, that was the one that I had originally colored a, uh, a picture for, but apparently they went ahead and used somebody else's. Uh, not sure what's up with that, but oh well. Um, and um, then I also, of course, have you know watched Anne, uh, who featured my Mandela's book, uh, Anne at a Colorful Life. Thank you so very, very much for that. And, uh, of course, Anne is such a huge draw, and people love to watch her videos, so they always get a lot of views. She's wonderful company. If you um, are looking for videos to watch, uh, that are just easy to listen to, just wonderful listening while you color or, you know, watch what she's coloring or whatever. You cannot go wrong with watching Anne at A Colorful Life. Um, okay, now I am going to, I think, uh, in the, I think I did a video like this, uh, I am going to start by putting some color in out here at the tips. And I've got my medium color. I'm going to try and just do a little initial shading. Not quite sure what I want yet for these. You know what kind of a shape I want to go with so I'm just kind of starting by adding a little color out at the tips maybe a little down the sides And just being very light with it until I make those choices. I think I might have made that one a little too... I'm going to try something else because you can always erase these, which I love. What I'm trying to do is I want to try and give these some roundedness. And I didn't do a very good job on that first one. But I'm, you know, it's... It's always you're when you're coloring you're you're waiting for a feeling. And you know, you, you find maybe you accidentally stumble into the one that that works for you or that you really like. And then you color the rest of the leaves like that. I'm trying to avoid these uh little doohickeys here because those are the uh those are where I'm going to be um, uh, doing something else. So I'm just, I'm going to try, I'm using like this where it dips right here. So it's like dipping down into a fold. And I think maybe I'm going to start leaving that, this top edge here without the color and see if that helps guide my my uh, vision. Because once again, you can always go back in and change these, which is why we're doing this lightly to begin with. And I'm just adding a little more color down here at the bottom 
because technically this would be where this layer of petals is shading it. So there would be a slightly deeper pink there. And I think I'm liking that a little better. So let me try it again with this one. So I'm just going to bring this area down in a V. Just like that. And I'm just doing around the outside edges for right now. And I think I'm liking that. So right now I'm going to go ahead and go back in and take out some of that color that I had put in this one. Trying to be pretty careful not to erase the, um, not to erase the, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get rid of his, you know, a little bit of it. In my case, since I screwed it up. Um, and of course, if you want to clean off your eraser, just find a scrap piece of paper and clean it off so that you're not spreading that um, pink around the pink pigment, which it will pick up since it is an oil-based pencil. And making sure, going back, making sure I have my middle color. I've done that before. And I'll only do about half of these. And then we'll move on to the center. Or maybe I'll, maybe I'll just keep this in real time. For you. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to try and do this like I was doing it live um, and in slightly bigger chunks. A lot of times I will uh, stop and start the video, but since this is a color along and not necessarily a color demo, I just want to try and do it that way. So I've been watching the uh, TV because apparently there are a couple storms out there in the <coughs> Atlantic that are brewing up a hurricane for our friends at Puerto Rico again, which is too bad. And of course, you never know. This is um, hurricane season here on the East Coast of the country and uh, of uh, USA. And um, so this is the time of year when I really do start to pay attention to what the, uh, what the news and especially the weathercasters have to say, although I don't get obsessed by it. Um, Just because, you know, it, it's, uh, while I, it, you know, the idea of a Category 5 hurricane hitting us is, or, you know, any, and of course, and I always go back to it, but the very first hurricane that I was in, or, you know, that I was here for on the East Coast, because I originally am from the West Coast of the USA, uh, so, you know, I can deal with sandstorms and, monsoons and Santa Ana winds and forest fires and earthquakes, but I was new to the, uh, to the hurricane. And, um, the first one that I was here for was Isabel, which was a, uh, it was a three for a long time. And then it, it as it hit the coast of North Carolina, uh, it, it hit actually right at the, pretty much the state line between, um, Virginia and North Carolina, and if you look at a map of the United States, Virginia Beach is, you know, parts of Virginia Beach sit right on that state line. Now, Virginia Beach, it happens to be a, a large 
geographical area. So, <coughs> excuse me. By the time it got here, it was more like a one and a half. But even at one and a half, it's not something that I uh, <laughs> that I would that I would want to do again willingly. It was pretty darn scary, I can tell you that. And it just, you know, because that one sort of stalled out there for a little bit, and it rained for quite some time, and the wind blew, and here we hadn't had one in, in so long that, um, that there were tons and tons of trees that went down, um, we lost, here at my house, we lost power for nine days, and I'm in the city. I am almost literally downtown. Um, and, which gives you an idea of, the, you know, the folks that were in the rural areas lost it for quite a bit longer. Um, but nine days with no power when you run a business online is a long time and at the time uh, I uh, made jewelry and I was selling it in a uh, eBay store and um, so okay yeah I'm liking I'm liking the idea of this so let's see if we can expand on this just a little bit I'll bring in some more of this light pink Just another light layer. And uh, so needless to say, I do watch the weather fairly carefully here ever since. And we have had some lovely, lovely cool days in the last uh, three, four days. It's been, uh, today's the first day it's been over 80. Otherwise, it's been um, low humidity <coughs> in the 70s, excuse me, with a lovely breeze. So I have been taking advantage of that, <coughs> excuse me, and I had my windows wide open. which has been so nice. You know, one of the things about when it gets so hot and humid day after day after day and you're stuck inside with the air conditioning and, you know, that all sounds really good, but there is very little that can be substituted for good, fresh, clean air, you know? Okay, so now I'm going to add a second layer and just sort of start to build a little bit on those contrasts, kind of fading them in. And making them a little richer. Sort of fading, you know, fading that second layer in. Being very, very light with my pencils. Not, you know, not pressing hard. I'm really letting the pencil do, do the work. Um, I'm just going up very lightly on those areas and just bringing it in. Just feathering, you know, feathering that darker shade in a little bit just to see where that leads. This is, I think, one of the reasons why now, of course, it depends upon the medium that you're using. Obviously, if you're using something like ink tents or, um, you know, or uh, uh, watercolors or something else, then your methods are going to be different. But with the pencils, 
especially with blending pencils like these, um, you know, I just sort of blend very softly and very lightly, just letting the pencil do the work. And these are really wonderful because they're wonderfully pigmented. Um, and they just, you know, once again, they just blend like a dream. So just feathering those in. And then I'm going to come in with a darker color still and hit up even more contrast. Because remember, this is only on my medium pink. Anyway, I hope that everyone is having a good week. It's Tuesday. Um, afternoon here and thank you to everybody who took advantage of the sale last week and um, and purchased mandalas um, and I hope that you are enjoying it thank you so much for all the tags on Instagram it has just been terrific um, to see all the lovely pictures uh, that you're doing from Mandela's and uh, 40 Fan Favorites and with those are my two newest books and um, uh, by the way uh, if you would like to follow me on social media you can do that I am on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all you need to remember is C.L. Aldridge Art uh, all one word and uh, there are the um, doohickeys that are showing up on the screen. <laughs> Not links, but at least, uh, you know, the, the address things. That I also have a coloring group um, called C.L. Aldridge's Coloring in Bloom Coloring Club. Ugh. Too many words. Uh, lots of words. On Facebook. And if you prefer and don't want to join all those, uh, you know, have yet another Facebook coloring group, uh, you can also post your pictures on my uh, artist page. And I cannot guarantee that I will see them there uh, as I usually visit my, uh, as I usually visit the, the group um, first. Uh, but also on my artist page uh, is where you'll find all of the, there's Facebook versions of, uh, of all the videos, um, which are in my playlist here, uh, of the flip throughs of all of my books. So you can preview the pages of any book that I've released before you purchase it. Just look for the playlist called uh, Coloring Book Flips. Okay, now I'm going to... Um, go with the, the, the third darkest in the triad. Ooh, that was interesting. <laughs> the, the camera glitched and it looked like, uh, it looked like my pencils just sort of appeared there on the page. Uh, okay, so this is the third darkest. So now I'm going to darken up this uh, shaded area here and darken these areas up here where the petals meet. I'm only going to do this on one side of the line. And basically just doing the same thing that I that I did before just being very, very light uh, and seeing how it goes. Because I want these to be very, very soft. You know, I want the color on these to be a very soft color. Once again, I'm only doing down the side 
on one side and it would be the side where the other petal slightly overlaps it and just working it down just a tiny bit and I might not even need to go as far up as I'm going maybe I'll maybe I'll stick with down here and see if that gives a better result once again it's always experimenting for me um, you know finding out what works where I want to go with it approaching it a little bit like I do a gemstone when I'm trying to settle the the highlight in a gemstone and your vision could be something entirely different you can flat color it you can if you're using markers you can marker color it you don't have to blend it out and you don't have to make it all you know fancy schmancy if you want to straight color it then straight color it you are the boss of your drawing you don't have to do it my way I'm just glad that you decided to participate and do it anyway at all Yeah, I like that. I like I like the way that that works with the darker pink as well. I'm going to come in and put a layer of lighter pink on top of it to sort of uh, blend it down a little bit. Just keep it keep building those rich, you know, building up the richness of the colors until eventually it looks all soft and satiny and all that kind of good stuff. Boy, there was some beautiful coloring on those Hannah Carls on project that Hannah Carls on project. Of course there are some beautiful coloring going on all over. Oops. Going on all over. I've been watching a lot of um, a lot of those uh, acrylic pour artists. They just, you know, I have, I have no desire to do acrylic pouring, but I sure do love to watch it. Um, you know how they're able to put silicone in their paints and get all these cells with the between the silicone and the metallics and you know all the different paints that are available um, apparently artist loft now has one that comes all pre-mixed with the pouring pouring medium in it and one of the pouring artists took that for a test drive it's you know it's, it's like 15 bucks a bottle so it's way too expensive to use as an all the time thing but um but she was so impressed with how it how it worked um, and how it turned out and it was fun to watch it and then I watched one who's developed a, a, it's called the the ninja the ninja swipe I think and um, she did one a big canvas like a you know it was like a 36 inch canvas or maybe it was slightly smaller but it was a large canvas and she did this ninja swipe on it and just kept it very, very minimal. She did it on a Payne's gray background and used uh, pinks and uh, lavenders and all of that. And her flower 
ended up looking like this like this exotic orchid and it was just oh my oh my <laughs> it really made you appreciate it okay now I'm going to take this lighter pink again and just sort of go over those spots blending them down using sort of medium pressure now um, you know and blending them into each other toward the center not you know not hard pressure but just sort of smoothing those those spots out so you see how it, it's starting to develop that that um, I don't know if you can actually see that or not Of course, I could be, could be a function of my own vision going wonky. <laughs> I'm liking it. What can I tell you? From here, they look very soft. Now, here is something that I have noticed. I will color on something like right now. The light is starting to dim outside. It's a late afternoon, uh, or. Yeah, it's almost 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and so tomorrow when uh, I look at it in the daylight with, you know, full sunshine, I may decide that I want to even add more contrast or more color to it. Uh, and at that point in time, feel perfectly free to do that. I mean, that's what coloring is Four. It's uh, the stuff sits around on my desk. Uh, you know, if I'm coloring on it for a couple days, and if I have an idle moment, I'm likely to add, you know, some more color to it. It isn't until I actually close the book and put the book away, um, and even then, the next time I have that book out and I look at it. If it was missing something, I will, you know, go back in and work on it a little more. Maybe add some sparkle here or there. This pencil is starting to be in pretty serious need of a good sharpen. So I think I might do that. Okay, now I'm just going to leave that for right now, and I want to uh, decide what to do with the inside. Now, the inside, of course, can be uh, the darker, uh, the darkest, and so this is why I also have this very dark pencil, um, which is a contrast shade, and I am going to do uh, this. Well, actually, I think I'm going to start by just doing this with it. And I just want to bring up in this lower flower a round of a dark color. a dark contrasted color. Oops, sorry. And I am using fairly firm pressure because I'm only intending to do this one one time. Uh, although I may add more contrast to it later if I think I need it, but um, for right now, I just want to sort of feather it out a little bit. And hopefully we're in good focus. And close enough for you to be able... Yeah, I'm zoomed all the way in. 
So hopefully you're able to see this. Heck of a time for me to decide to check the focus, huh? <laughs> uh, oh, you never know. You just never know around here. I spent the entire morning um, deleting pieces, video pieces. <laughs> of all of these previous videos that I've made because, of course, they take up tons of space on your computer. And once they're posted, you don't really need them for anything. Um, and there's only one drawing or one video that I didn't uh, delete the pieces. And it is a, it's the drawing video where I actually drew this. And I drew it uh, on a, a, you know, a speed drawing for you guys. But it's a nine hour render time for 18 hours of video or 18 minutes of video because um, of the, the because I've crunched it all down into a, an 18 minute speed coloring or speed drawing. And um, I just <laughs> I just have not had the time or um, I shouldn't say time. I haven't had the uh, inclination yet. To, um, to to set it to rendering because it takes a you know I, it it won't release my computer until it's done and uh, I can't do anything else so so I just haven't done it yet but it's coming one of these days I will you know the yin and the yang will meet and time and opportunity will uh, mesh okay um, Now, I want this to be pretty dark. I want this one to be pretty dark. So, I think that I will... Uh, what do I want to do? Yeah, I think that I will use this and come out. Yeah, I do want... I want this one to be very dark and bold. So I'm just going to go ahead and come off that previous darker color. Now this is how I'm doing mine. If you want to do yours differently, you can certainly do that. Remember, there are no rules. You don't even have to use these colors. You can use whatever colors you want with this color along. Um, and if you would, when you post to social media, if you would tag me, CL Aldridge Art, um, I will do my best to try and find everything. I tried to create a fancy uh, name for this color along, but I gotta tell you guys, the hashtag creation and you know all that fancy stuff and, and all that kind of stuff is it's just not my thing. I don't, I don't, uh, I mean, everything that I could think of to call it was already used uh, in one, you know, frame. One, some, one person or another has already claimed all those hashtags. Uh, you know, I wanted to call it the hot August. Uh, color along but that was taken and so just tag me <laughs> just tag me and I'll find it I'll find it bring this out so it's just a little more a little more even in a circle
So did everybody have fun at the Disney-a-thon, Disney Color-a-thon, over the weekend? Lots and lots of interest in uh, Disney, of course, because who doesn't love Disney stuff? A little something for everybody. Animals, princesses. You name it, Disney has done it. Boy, I'm having a heck of a time with keeping this circle even. That's okay. Half the fun is uh, maybe not making it even. Okay, and then this is the third color, which is the medium. So we'll use that. Once again, I am just single layer, uh, fairly hard pressure. I could probably layer this in and do all of that kind of good stuff, but because I, what I want to do is I just want to set this up as contrast to the lighter pinks in the outer ring. And I'll blend it all down with the very lightest pink. Often the challenge of learn of using a three color palette like I'm doing is, um, you know, selecting what will be what colors based upon the fact that you all, you do have a limited color palette. So you want to keep your lights and your darks. Uh, you want to make sure that you, you keep your contrasts going. But sometimes you need to contrast with the same colors that you are uh, using for a main element. So that is what I'm trying to do here. And in not making this gradation very subtle, just, you know, making a straight grade, darker to lighter, Hopefully, I will achieve that. Okay, now I can actually blend that down with the lightest of the colors. And I may be sorry I did that. So, maybe that's not the right answer. Maybe the right answer is blending it with the... Um, with the lightest of the, the shades that I actually used on it, as opposed to the lightest shade I've got. So, one thing I have found that this Prisma sharpener is really wonderful for these pencils. Uh, it works much better on the delis than it does on my Prismas, which is good because I have it. And I can use my M&R sharpener on my Prismacolors. Yeah, that is that's much better for keeping the uh, keeping the the contrast uh, high between these petals and these petals. up there on the plate and hopefully get them out of the way.
I hope that you like this image. I, uh, when I was trying to select one, this is, by the way, um, the book that we are in uh, is 40 fan favorites, but uh, which features five of the best-selling drawings from each of my first eight books. Uh, but this picture was originally in mm, uh, Flowers of Fantasy, which was this one. Uh, whoops. Look at there. Hey. You know, okay. See, my computer is glitching again. Okay. This one was originally in Flowers of Fantasy. I think, yeah, yep, yeah, there it is, okay, which is this book. Along with a bunch of other really beautiful pictures. It was either going to be this one that we're doing or it was going to be this one um, for this color along. But ultimately, I decided that this had a whole lot of open space. And even though I could color it with, um, you know, some lovely shine or sheen, I thought that the gemstones would be more appealing overall. So that's why I chose this one for the color along. Uh, okay, keeping going. Don't get distracted, Christine. You know what happens when you get distracted. <laughs> I forget what I'm doing. I kept getting distracted yesterday, and it took me five hours <laughs> to do something that normally takes me about 20 minutes. Because I was all about, ooh, I needed to go do this. Hang on, I gotta do, I no, gotta do it right this very second. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. All right. So That is, uh, okay, so that's good. Now, that will hopefully also inform me how to proceed with where I want to go with some more of this. I am going to uh, take a very quick pause to uh, heat up my coffee. I'm going to turn off the camera. Be right back. Okay, now I do think that I need to draw back my pinks and see what to do with the, let's see, that's the darkest one. So I'm gonna take that back out and I'm gonna go back to this medium one and I wanna to continue to work this and I want to sort of bring it out a little bit more and narrow up these highlights just a little bit. Because ultimately the, the, the light spots that I'm leaving are the highlights of each individual petal. So I just want to narrow those up a tiny bit and see if that helps the overall feeling and just sort of out here at the out here at the tip 
tips of them. Sort of working the color deeper around. That's probably very hard for you to see. Uh, it does. It hardly shows up on my monitor at all. Um, but on your own coloring, you'll you'll see it um, if you're using the pinks. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you're using the the mustards on your flower instead, of, or another color. But I'm just, it also, it by narrowing it up, it has a tendency to make them appear a little lighter still. Against the darker contrast, so more like <coughs> little waves. And this is the same technique that you would use on dress folds. You know, if you were looking for um, to get a highlight in a, a fold of fabric, it's the same kind of technique of leaving the, the white shine or sheen right where you want that highlight to be. What, oh, what did I get to see? I am. Um, our PBS stations are all running their fundraisers for the year. Um, now here in Virginia, our PBS stations, that's public broadcasting system, um, are all owned by the school districts. And, um, or, you know, here in Virginia Beach, at any rate, it's owned by the Hampton Roads school districts. And there are seven cities that make up Hampton Roads. Uh, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Suffolk, uh, Isle of Wight, uh, Newport News, Hampton, uh, Hampton. Um, oh heck, and there's probably a couple of others. Um, at any rate, so they do their annual fundraiser, which of course is what allows PBS to produce and buy <coughs> the kind of programming that um, that the subscribers like, which is things like Masterpiece Theater and and uh, mystery, you know, Masterpiece Mysteries and Nova and Frontline and all of the other shows. You know, we buy a lot of B PBS or um, BBC programs uh, and all of that. And so... One of the things that they do is they broadcast really cool concerts at this time of year for fundraising. Um, and so they, they make a long story short, the uh, the other night, Saturday night, we got treated to Prince. Uh, we saw the Prince concert for um, from 1999 that he did for the uh, for you know the millennial uh, when you know, when we celebrated the year 2000, which was a, a beautiful concert. Now, I've got the greens in my hands. Uh, and, and at any rate, it was very special. Uh, and then, of course, the contrast color for the brown. And uh, I want to do the... I'm going to uh, work on the stems a little bit. And I don't know exactly what I want to do. So because I don't know, I'm going to start with the lightest shade. Uh, I don't know if I want these to be more olivey or more of a uh, green. And I don't know on these 
if I want them to be the mustard or if I want them to be uh, the dark, you know, pink, um, or if I want them to be uh, brown or or stick with green. So right now I'm hoping for an idea <laughs> is what is going on with this. Uh, and seeing if it'll it'll tell me what it wants or if I have to tell it. I am thinking that I really want these see but then when we get down here it, it becomes very difficult for them to show up if I keep them in this pink so if instead I do them in a brown or gold but that'll be boring. So I'm thinking that maybe, maybe I'll do these in the lighter green and treat them more like leaves. What's the worst thing that can happen? We can decide we don't like it and we can change it. So if I do that, then maybe I want to go a darker green at the base of them. And maybe down here as well. Because remember that these are supposed to be olive. So but there's no reason why we can't go with the light and the dark and see how it goes. Now I am using fairly hard pressure, which means that if I don't like it and I decide to change my mind, um, oops, computer screen is frozen again. Stop, stop. There we go. And breezes. So now I'm up. See now just when I say that I love this sharpener for the green, look at what happened. So part of it is that I've allowed that to get a little full. And I think what happens is, is that it um, it accidentally pulls up some of the um, uh, some of the other colors. So I'm going to use a little brush or the some of the wood from previous sharpenings. I think it gets pulled up into the blades from underneath. So I'm going to use a little brush to get that out of there. Boy, that is a stubborn piece, isn't it? Come out of there. I need a longer brush. And preferably one that I won't cut up. Getting it that close to those blades. Come out of there. See, it's like it's stuck. It's stuck right in behind here. In that case, we need a better operation. We need, yes, we need the paper clip. Aha. Uh -huh. See how that got stuck in there? And that's what caused that 
to do that. So that is sad. Say goodbye to that beautiful point and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can actually get this pencil to sharpen again. Uh, I'm going to start it in the M&R sharpener uh, just because I want to be able to see what is actually happening with the pencil as we sharpen it. See now the M&R will only take it so far because this is a large core pencil. Now I could take it over here to this larger hole on the M&R to get a little more of it off and expose it so that now it's sort of a dull point. Now I should be able to sharpen it well with the Prisma. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to get way too fussy on it because I suspect that if I do it'll break again. But if that happens and you have an M&R, then do that. Do the small first to get as much of the wood off and then try the larger and make it a little bit better and then try it in your Prismacolor sharpener. Sometimes you just have to find what works. Um, and while it's not got a truly sharp point on it, it is once again sharpened and it's steady. So I'm just going to call it good. And be quite happy that it sharpened and I didn't lose any more of it. Because sometimes if you're chasing after them, you know, chasing after that solid point uh, using the Prismacolor, you can, uh, you know, pretty much shred a pencil down two or three inches before you finally get it again and to me that's just a waste so what was I talking about who knows It'll either come to me again or it won't. Oh, PBS. PBS doing, okay, the Prince concert. Yes, so we had the Prince concert, which was absolutely fabulous. And then it was followed by something else equally as fabulous, which is just amazing to me. Um, although it's hard to say what would be as, you know, equal to Prince, except maybe... Michael Jackson, and it wasn't Michael Jackson, I can tell you that. Um, plus, Michael Jackson never did a spot for PBS, but Prince did. So... Or actually, he licensed it to PBS to use for fundraising. Um, yeah, I like that. I like the uh, I like the greens going on over the pinks. That works for me. How about for you? What do you think? Do you like the greens over the pinks? Leave a comment below. Uh, would you have used a different color? Keeping in mind the colors that we have 
that we're using, which are limited to these. Um, yes, okay, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so let me check what time it is and uh, be right back. Okay, wow. I didn't, boy, that first section lasted 52 minutes and uh, uh, the second was 17. So we are at a, uh, a little over an hour. And as I am looking at this, um, I'm thinking that I, uh, that, that I will stop for this section and um, do the rest of this flower um, uh, off air and come back and we will uh, do the uh, flowers here for uh, an another section of this, um, trying to keep these to just about an hour in length. But before I do that, I have this idea. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be too much or not enough or what, but I want to give it a, just a, a quick try here. Um, these are the, whoops, yeah, okay. Once again, take out the darkest shade and uh, I wanted to see what would happen if I did a little gemstone in these spaces. Not, you know, not a, a not anything super, uh, super duper color changey, but just a little pink, like rose quartz. See, this pencil works, or this, or, huh, this sharpener works great for this pencil. I just sharpened this. My uh, computer is hanging up on different frames. Just to add a little bit of something in there or if it's going to end up being too much. Let's do do one more and see what we think. So doing it just exactly like I did the others. Do a highlight there to sort of highlight that gemstone and then I've got my lightest shade, go to my medium shade and sort of blend that down into the corners, come around the edge of the box.
just to add a little I don't know you know with the with those being pink that may be too much I may end up taking those out of there <coughs> or I may end up leaving them I don't know if I like that what do you think do you like that let me know in the comments and um, and see what you think now let's let's experiment with that just a little bit further instead of doing the pinks let me do two more in the golds um, and let me see if if maybe who oh no I don't think so although you never know No, no, that is definitely, that's a definite no. Okay, never mind, never mind that one. We won't do that. I didn't like that at all. I can get that out of there with whatever background color we end up using. So, yeah, we'll take that out of there. But, <coughs> it was worth a try. I might like the pink, though. I think I might like the pink. Maybe... Maybe if we add a little of the gold to the pink. Ooh, nobody says we can't mix colors. Oh, hey, 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 hey. We may be cooking with gas on that. Let's try another one. <laughs> Heck with the time clock. Let's try another one of those. Uh, okay. So we've got the darkest color here. All right, oops, I'm going to add, now I'm going to, I'm going to approach this series. Oops. I keep, I keep trying to, keep trying to sharpen the pencil with my, uh, with my dome. Oh, by the way, huge thank you to, uh, Melinda, who, uh, I had mentioned that I had been looking for one of these so that I could put it up in my um, uh, in my uh, descriptions for you guys uh, because people just think it's cool and of course this is what I use to read fine print um, uh, you know a mail that comes in uh, and so uh, I had always admired this on a friend of mine's desk until I admired it so often that he finally handed it over. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't laugh. That is not. That was not my intent with it. But um, it's a, a wonderful magnifying glasses glass. Um, at any rate, and Melinda tracked one down. She found one on Amazon, and uh, gave me the link. So there is a link to this, and I will put it in my video descriptions from now on because it is literally one of my favorite things, and uh, I think everybody should have one. It is quite the handiest tool on my desk. And uh, so, um, oops, let me make sure that I get that darkest one out of my hand again, so that I am doing this with the colors that we are, are using. I may not have gotten that one quite right. But I liked that with the gold overlay. That just made a really pretty gemstone. 
and it made it different enough from the pink flower that I think we can use it without running the risk of it being too pink. It looks like a, a you know, it looks like a cool sunset. And once again, um, you know, just because you have a, a limited color palette doesn't mean that you can't use those colors to mix yet another color. The rule is that you've got all these pencils in your hand, but so then if you put a little gold over it, it lets this sort of magic thing happen. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it, love it, love it. Okay, so I will uh, continue on. I will finish this flower and I will add these in. That also gives me an idea for how to highlight uh, a little bit down in here. Uh, and ooh, let's just experiment with that now. Um, maybe we can do a little of that. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Maybe we'll just leave that pretty pink. Yeah, we'll just leave that pretty pink. And we'll just do that for a contrasting shade around the outside. Because I think that if I do this, it's going to make those too much the same. And that's going to take away from what I'm after. Which is to make this a pretty pink and these uh, an accent gemstone around the edge. So, uh, continue on. Hopefully you will continue on with yours. And until we meet again uh, on the next installment, which will be uh, forthcoming very soon, please color something pretty. Bye, everybody, and thank you so much for joining me.